Welcome into this emergency edition of the KSO Show. Mason Voth, Derek Young with you as we finally have a non-conference basketball schedule from K-State. Some schools released theirs two months ago. The Wildcats were finally curating their schedule for the second season under Jerome Tang. We finally have it. We finally know what it looks like. And really nothing too crazy on there. Obviously, no new big games. We, we knew about all of those, whether it was the game with USC or any of the Big East uh, Challenge game with Villanova, the other marquee non-cons that were previously announced. But there are some historically tricky uh, non-Power 5 or in basketball Power 6 opponents on the schedule this year. So there's a look at it if you're you're watching with us on YouTube. Uh, there is the non-conference schedule put out by K-State. Things will start unofficially November 1st against Emporia State for that first exhibition. And then everybody knew that the, the Cats were going to open up play, not with an easy test. Uh, they will be in Las Vegas against USC. But you see where the wrinkles kind of come into play here with the, uh, the non-power opponents because – you're going to get Bellarmine, who comes in, and they were a very strong lower division school. They bumped up to Division One. Their very first year in Division One, they won the A Sun tournament. Yet they were ineligible because of the transition rules that the NCAA has. Note on them: they play in Louisville, Kentucky, and they play in the old Freedom Hall. So they play where Louisville historically played before they moved into the KFC Yum Center, and then South Dakota State, who's been a mid-major success lately. Uh, most notably, Baylor Shireman, who transferred from there, ended up at Creighton, but South Dakota State, a team that is strong in that ranks. And then Oral Roberts also appears on the schedule later down the line to uh, close out the month of November for the Wildcats. A little bit of a different situation, though. Paul Mills, their head coach, has moved on. He is at Wichita State now. Obviously, Max Asmus is not there anymore as well, but he is at Texas. So, both of those guys who are studs for Oral Roberts, K-State will still see in some fashion this year. It just won't be with Oral Roberts, which probably makes that a little bit easier. Uh, but, D.Y., initial thoughts on the Wildcats' uh, opening schedule release here. Um, not making it totally easy on themselves. Uh, yeah, and that's probably putting it lightly. I mean, they, they, even the high major opponents that maybe and, – and that Wichita State's not a high major opponent, but – I would group them into that just because of their cachet that they have and, and that game being in Kansas City and, and kind of a rivalry. And, and the game was close last year. So uh, adding Wichita State and Nebraska, I mean, Nebraska still hasn't won an NCAA tournament game, but obviously that's a team that can hang with you at least for a little bit and, and give you a challenge. So adding Villanova, LSU, Providence, maybe Miami, USC, those mid-majors that are not – the bottom of the mid-major pool. And you, if you got through this year's non-conference slate in a similar way to how Kansas State got through it last year, which was just one loss, if I remember correctly, you'd, you'd feel like you hit a home run, I think. Yeah, I mean, th this is a, a schedule that will be tougher, not just from the standpoint of uh, maybe some of the, the, the opponents that weren't publicized prior to today, but, I mean, yeah, you're, you're looking at uh, I'll throw the schedule back up there, but you are looking at just some really talented opponents or at least name opponents that are on there. Obviously, like, you know, LSU, Nebraska, Wichita State, that stretch right there where you're going to play three consecutive games against, well, actually four going back to Villanova. Oh, you're going to play four consecutive games against power six opponents in the non-con. Yes, some of those are not great. And I, honestly, all four of those did not have – special seasons last year by any means but you throw that into addition to usc already on the schedule and then providence and then either georgia or miami likely miami um k-state really tested themselves a, a little bit more and i'm a little surprised that they were you know that gung-ho on on making it happen um but obviously it shows that there's some faith and confidence in this team and they probably realize that um they they fix some of the wrongs from the scheduling from a year ago. Now, not much of last year's schedule was on this current staff that was in place, but I thought it was an error last year to have the, the short layoff after the Thanksgiving tournament, and then you immediately come back and you're playing on the road against a Big East opponent. 
Um, I, I think the, the loss to Butler was more of a schedule loss than anything for K-State because you have a bunch of guys that are still trying to figure out how to play together. They just had this time off, and now their return is on the road against the Big East opponent. I would have liked K-State to have done something. I, I pointed out KU's schedule last year. They came back from their Thanksgiving tournament, and before they played their Big East game, they played some wimpy little opponent at home and then got back into the meat of their schedule. And that's honestly what we get with K-State this year. They are going to go after they they play um, in the Bahamas. They will come back and they get Central Arkansas at home and they help kind of ramp up again with three games against non-Power 6 opponents uh, with Central Arkansas, Oral Roberts, and North Alabama before they start that challenging stretch with Villanova, LSU, Nebraska, and Wichita State. And then the other thing to note real quick, Chicago State, the final non-conference game listed, that is January 2nd. So what that means is that Big 12 play is not starting on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day this year, or at least for K-State it isn't. Who knows, maybe they do something kind of weird and wacky with it. Um, but this likely means that K-State will not play their first Big 12 game, uh, at least in the normal conference play window, until January 6th, which is a Saturday uh, this upcoming season. And that would make it the latest conference start since you'd have to go back to January of 2013. K-State opened against Oklahoma State on January 5th. But to go back a couple more years to actually get a start that was later, January 8th against Oklahoma State as well uh, in the 2011 season. So kind of gives us a little peek into maybe how the Big 12 is going to stack up here. Um, so just an, another interesting scheduling quirk to uh, kind of take stock of here is the Wildcats released the non-conference schedule for uh, 2023. Absolutely. And and I know everyone's looking forward to that USC contest, which will actually begin the slate. I know it's Emporia State's the one that shows up on the schedule, but that's likely an exhibition uh, contest. And they'll open up with USC in Las Vegas. Everyone excited about that matchup, rightfully so. But we're going to learn about really about Kansas State much more beyond that. I don't think an opening night contest with USC, regardless of how fun it is, it's more of a resume boost. You put it out there and you also get a lot of notoriety and exposure as well. But it's not when we're going to learn about Kansas State uh, with this non-conference schedule. I would say maybe learn a little bit about them when they're in the Bahamas. I think Providence mm -hmm. and then Miami is a challenge. But the most is kind of that stretch I think you alluded to. Um, yes, Nebraska and Wichita State, maybe not NCAA tournament opponents, but a four-game stretch. Before Big 12 conference play, when you're playing teams of, of that nature, I think is probably when you'll learn the most about K-State because it's also further in the year. Uh, they've grown together at that point, and we've seen enough basketball to maybe make some conclusions, and that's when that four-game stretch hits where they host Villanova and Bramlage mm -hmm. Coliseum. It'll probably be a very fun atmosphere. I do think Villanova will be improved um, year two under that coach. At LSU, that's a road game, just straight-up road game. So it's the first one of its kind on the Kansas State schedule, to be quite honest. So that's a, that'll be a test. You host Nebraska and then a, a, um, a neutral site affair, which I think it, they might still consider it a home game for Kansas State, if I mm -hmm. remember correctly, just because they're running that similar to where the Shockers did when it was at Intra. So that four-game stretch is, I think, when we'll learn the most about the Wildcats this season in terms of non-conference play. And probably just to finish up, I think we've kind of made every takeaway that we can at this point. This is probably an interesting question. As a fan, as someone that covers Kansas State, so I'm also um, directing this question towards myself, which game are you most looking forward to? Uh, the neutral site game with USC, that's a top 10 opponent probably. Um, they had the number one recruit last year, I think, in Isaiah Collier. Boogie Ellis, big time. You're playing in Las Vegas. I don't know if Bronny James will play, probably not. But there, there's going to be a lot of eyes on that game, even though it's a Monday night football is probably what you're colliding with as well. Or, and this assumes that they beat Georgia, a uh, you know a potential matchup against Nigel Pack in the Bahamas. Well, a DY, you know my answer. You sat next to me in Intrust Bank Arena uh, two seasons ago when Luke Kasubke drilled a corner three to give the Cats the lead, their first lead of the game after starting slow, Still and then. Slow. <laughs> the the rebirth of Mark, the, like I guess not the rebirth. It was the birth of Marquise Noel being Marquise Noel hitting you know a deep three there it, without Nigel Pack, mind you, out with a yeah. concussion for that game. 
my heart sank. I got off the air doing shocker sound off on KGSO, and the, the word hit me that Nigel was out. I was like, oh, Lord. I've waited my entire life to be ready to clown on all these Wichita State fans, and now Nigel Pack isn't playing. Didn't matter. Cats still came away with the win. Uh, that's the game for me that I'm most excited about. I, I think a lot of people that, that live and grew up in the area of Kansas that I did, they will feel the same way. Uh, Wichita State fans have to be put in their place, so I always look forward to that. But outside of that, I mean, it is going to be uh, probably the game with USC. Like, and we are just instantly going to kind of get an idea of what K-State is like this season. And if things had been different, I would have probably said, you know, that eventual game with Miami that I think takes place just because, hey, it's Nigel Pack. The, the problem here is nobody that was connected to Nigel Pack at K-State is still at K-State. Like the coaching staff is gone. It would have been electric if Marquise Noel and Nigel Pack were, were dueling it out. Instead, he's gone. Um, so there's just – there's no ties there. And it would be even different, too, if, like, Miami was coming to Bramlage because then I would say that because that would be electric. You get two teams that went deep in the tournament last year, and that place would have a lot of I – mean, a lot of hate directed towards Nigel Pack, I would my, imagine. My, Miami and Bramlage would have been the best-case scenario, and that would yes. have been the same donkey answer. But it's a Thanksgiving tournament, not in the country. Yep. It, it's hard – to put that on the same level as USC. Yeah, it'll be in a high school gym, and, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. That, that will be a great game, I think, if it, if it comes to fruition. But USC is, is the right answer. Uh, Wichita State is the answer and, if you want to have State, a lot of fun. And kids, that will have to be Providence, too. Although I will say, we should not write off the Villanova game at home. Like, that is – you'd have to think, and I'm, prob- I'm sure I'm overlooking people uh, just off the top of my head – but that is a pretty marquee opponent to get into Bramlage for a game that K State has not had in a long time. Yeah, Marquette, but Villanova's on a different level than Marquette coming in. I agree. And, they won a national title not long mm-hmm. ago. Won a couple, I think. Was it? Yeah, they won. They the won chair? a few. Now, so, the, the yeah. thing with Villanova that I'll you know watch for. They were seventeen and seventeen last year. What was Kyle Neptune's first season? They didn't do a lot in terms of high school recruiting this year. They were outside of like the top 100 in high school recruiting. But what they did do is deliver four uh, transfers with some good upside, including Lance Ware, who was at Kentucky last year. And then they won the TJ Bomba sweepstakes. Um, And and there was some, you know, some heavy consideration and interest in in Bomba coming out of Washington state from a lot of good teams. So that's probably one that I'm not giving enough due, but we know the USC game, it's going to have it all down there. And to start the season that way is a a big deal for K-State. Villanova is a good one. Probably the, I would say that'll be the best atmosphere in Bramlage of the non-conference games. I think that's accurate. Although the, the students might turn up a little bit for Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, the students and the olds. I, I uh, any, anybody that is just will sink right back into that, getting a crack at Nebraska in Manhattan for the first time. Cause I mean, the environment in, in T-Mobile center last year for the game was pretty impressive. Like uh, we had not seen a K-State, you know, neutral site game in Kansas City or Wichita look like that probably since uh, maybe the Gonzaga game uh, when Marcus Foster dunked on David Stockton. Yeah, yeah I wasn't um, there for that, but I will say low key, just randomly, it was well, it must have been 17, 18, or 18, 19. When they had Vanderbilt there, it was really good. Oh, yes, you were right about that. Well, that was that was Sprint Center Mac getting after Bryce, it. Yeah, and Bryce Drew was still the coach, I think, and they didn't win a league game that year, I believe. Yeah, they were not. Th- those Vanderbilt teams were not very good. So I, I will say this. Final takeaway from all everything that's come out of this schedule, what we know that Jerome Tang and his staff want to do is get marquee names on the schedule for K-State to play, not just for the fans, but also for the sake of putting their team in certain situations. And that's what that road trip to LSU is going to bring. It's not like LSU was a great team last year, but these two teams played a great game against each other last year and they will get better. Matt McMahon will probably get it figured out and, and get And LSU and LSU comes to brand much next year. So that's fun. Yep, it is. It's, it's going to be a fun time. So that is uh, the look at the K-State 2023 non-conference basketball schedule. Now all we have to do is wait like probably a couple more weeks, a month for the Big 12 to release their schedule uh, for all the tip times and everything else. 
And uh, then we'll have a full schedule in front of us. And basketball will be here before we know it, less than two months until that exhibition game uh, will tip off with Emporia State. And I guess now we are officially uh, less than two months away from the, the actual opener against USC. Um, so that, that all uh, is, is to be taken note of. And basketball will be on the way very, very soon.